Hello everyone, welcome to my 1cc commentary and strategy guide for Sin and Punishment 1, one of my favorite games of all time. But before I get into the strategy and commentary proper, since we're in the first level here and you don't really need a whole lot of a strategy advice for the first level, unless you're going for scoring, why don't I explain the game a little bit and just talk about how you should access it these days before we get into the strategy section. So I am playing this right now on RetroArch N64 version uh, using the Japanese ROM. And from what I understand, the Japanese ROM, you want to make sure that you are loading into normal mode rather than loading into easy mode. Because I think in the version I keep playing, it sort of seems to default onto easy mode. And so I recommend you go ahead and you look at the title screen of this run right at the beginning using the top right corner panel that is the difficulty selection and the mode i'm here showing here is normal mode so make sure to have that swapped over to the right difficulty before you start playing and you can tell top right panel like i was saying before and so this game has releases on of course the n64 which i would say playing on the original console is cool and all but I tend to just prefer to play it in emulator over the original console. And the reason for that is because one, the visuals of the original console, no matter how much you throw at it, are going to be a little bit muddy because the N64 has this weird sort of muddy output, even if you do RGB and stuff like that. And also, I don't think it's a big deal if emulators run the game a little bit more less accurately than what you'd see in a shmup they tend to overrun it you know remove the slowdown in my opinion getting rid of the slowdown of the game is a plus whereas in a shmup like don't on or something where the game is balanced around the slowdown very heavily this game not so much i think removing the slowdown is perfectly fine and also what's kind of fun is that when you get into the secret modes of the game there's actually a mode called like frame skip mode which not only runs the game twice as fast, but also removes the slowdown by frame skipping. So the developers really wanted to have the game run as smoothly towards 60 FPS as possible. So for those reasons, I don't think playing an emulator is a big deal. And then on top of that, you have the Wii version of the game on Virtual Console. That version is solid and all, and what's nice is it has English menus, but uh, the Wii Shop is dead, and you know, hooking up the Wii is kind of the pain in the ass. But that version is very solid if you want to play on the Wii. And then there's playing it on the recent Switch version. And I had a whole stream, and I've actually 1cc'd the Switch version, and that's much uh, tip more difficult than doing it on emulator here or on the virtual console and the reason for that is the switch version is laggy as shit i didn't do a full-on input lag test but it is a laggy laggy boy and on top of that the switch version has no control config none because nintendo are lazy bastards and so if you want to play the game with a proper control setup in my opinion because the default one is absolute garbage you have to play it on a pro controller and be the reason is because in the system menu of the switch you can control config your pad in the system menu not in the actual game and it only allows you to do that on a pro controller so i have a cool little uh, plug-in where i'm able to use an xbox one pad on my switch it's some uh, modded software which is cool but since the system does not allow me to config it i couldn't use it so i had to borrow my friend's pro controller to play on the switch and uh so anyway all that being said the switch version is shitty because it's laggy but also on top of that unless you have a pro controller or unless you have a cool little n64 bluetooth controller or whatever Mm, the control is going to be a mess because they couldn't be bothered to add a control config. And so let's now get into the strategy section of the video. So I recommend just playing it on emulator or playing it on original console if you're so inclined or playing it on Wii Virtual Console. All those are solid options, but playing it on the Switch, no go. So the way this game works is I wouldn't actually consider this a 3D rail shooter necessarily. 
it gets lumped into that category and that's because the category is a little bit iffy defined at best so you could call it a rail shooter that's fine but it is fundamentally different than something like Star Fox 64 <clears throat> and the reason for that is because Star Fox 64 and actually Sin and Punishment 2 funnily enough have what I call eight-way movement which means basically you are flying in the air and at any time you can go upright or you know diagonally you can go in all eight directions at any point in time but Sin and Punishment is actually more like Wild Guns on the Super Nintendo if you've played that where it's like a run and gun in 3D with auto scrolling and the reason for that is because you don't actually have eight way movement instead you have four way movement with a jump so it can temporarily give you seven way movement but you never can or six way move you can never achieve full eight way movement so it is actually a little bit different even basic genre wise than its sequel Sin and Punishment 2 or Star Fox 64 but it's close enough that it kind of gets thrown into the rail shooter category so I guess we'll, we'll call it that but the thing to keep in mind with this game is that let's go over the controls a bit. So you have the full analog control over your reticle. Then you have a switch button, which changes the reticle from red to blue. And the way this works is important to understand. So the red reticle is the free aim. And the advantage of the free aim is that not only is it flexible for targeting things very quickly, but also it does more damage. And that's the main thing to keep in mind about the free aim. And why you don't want to be too heavy on the lock on reticle, which is the blue one, because what's nice is that there's certain sections that are made clearly to use the lock on reticle, but you're not gonna do as much damage. So the way it works is if you have yourself locked on with the blue reticle, you no longer need to worry about aiming because you're locked on so now you can focus a lot on more intensive sections that require jumping and dodging and running but the trade-off is you're going to be doing less damage so is if you can get away with actually manually targeting with the red red reticle that's usually the best way to go because you're going to do a lot more damage in boss fights or otherwise but in certain sections because the movement is so intensive uh, sometimes you have to go with the lock on and you'll see that from, and it also makes when you reflect things a lot easier because it'll lock onto them more automatically so this guy right here what the game wants you to do is it wants you to reflect these black bullets at him and the way you reflect things is so if you hold the shot button you get the full auto but when things come close to you if you hit attack again you will get a sword that will come out. So the way this works, there's sort of a technique that develops a lot in a lot of these sections. It hasn't really shown itself yet, but it will in the later stages, is what I call like sword buffering. So the way it works is if you're hold, full, holding down the shot button, you're going full auto, but if you kind of feather the input, and you can see the input display later on, I'll point out when this happens. If you start feathering the input, then you can buffer a sword slice into your shots. The only downside is this uh, lowers your output of your full auto a little bit, but the trade-off is you're going to be able to get a clean sword swing in there. And we haven't quite run into it yet, but we will very soon, so I'll point that out. So that's sort of the main controls. And then you have movement with the L and R button. So you don't move. It's not like a twin stick shooter where <clears throat> or a 3d third person shooter where you move with one stick and then you uh, attack and aim with the other stick and it's sort of crossed between the two sticks instead you have full aim with your main stick and then you move and to the left and right with buttons and so this is where playing on the n64 pad makes a lot of sense because you know the the control was made for the n64 pad so when you're trying to convert it over to modern controllers, it can be a little bit funky, but you can see the way I actually implement it here on the control display. And this is why I added the control display uh, to this. I'm actually playing on an Xbox One pad, but the PS4 control display is cleaner looking. So I went with that and it's basically the same. So you can see my movement. I actually mapped my movement to two different options. So the main way I move is I'm either using square or circle so I'm using the face buttons to move left to right but there are certain times especially when you're jumping in the air that you also want to be able to drift using the right analog stick 
And so I have my left and right movement mapped to both the buttons for precise movement on the ground, and then also to the control stick for when I start to drift in the air in certain sections, and you'll see that. Oh, I better uh, give a little pointer on that boss fight there. So when she gets to that final pattern, you want to just sit there and buffer your sword swing because she's going to jump forward or time it, and you time the sword swing. Uh, that's just advice on how to get through that section. So here's how you fight the boss. This boss here has different patterns. And the way it works, it has the first low swing, which you jump. Then it has the cross swing, which will catch a jump. So you just need to move uh, to the right or to the left. Most I go from left to right to dodge. And then it has the third swing, which all you need to do again is go to the one side of the screen and move to the left. So here now I am locked on. This is one of the harder patterns in the game to dodge, funnily enough. But uh, so I'm locked on now. So now that I'm locked on, I'm doing less damage, but I can focus on my movement. And you can see here, you have to do some little micro dodging, which is kind of fun, in between the waves here. And you can see me on the controller carefully uh, releasing and inputting. And the reason why you have to be careful with your left and right movement in the game is because if you double press left or right, you roll. And rolling is important. But if you're trying to micro space around things, you don't want to get an accidental roll. So you need to be a little bit more careful with your left and right movements as far as being methodical to input and release without double inputting and accidentally getting a roll to the side. So once you get that boss finished, now the game really starts cooking here. So this is where the game starts to get difficult, I would say, when you swap characters. So on this section here, you want to aim up at the top of the screen and kill things as soon as they spawn otherwise you'll start running into them uh, these guys right here are gonna start testing your ability to jump so the way it works is on this right side here you want to jump up slice them you want to shoot the one in the middle and then the ones on the sides uh, you can take cover behind but if you need to dodge you have to jump them so the game is, in this stage especially, it's going to start testing your ability to jump and control yourself while you're jumping. This mid-boss here is going to be the first hang-up for players because it's kind of funky. The way it works is you want to go to an auto-locking reticle. You want to auto-lock onto him, but shooting him isn't really the, that big of a deal, that useful. Instead, what you want to do is you want to reflect those satellites at him by swinging your sword as you walk by and locking them onto him. And then he goes into this section here where he runs on the top. And this was confused me for a long time, but the way you deal with it is you have a double jump. So you want to run counterclockwise, right? Or is it clockwise? Counter to the direction he runs. So he spawns faster on your screen. Then you double jump, slice, run, wait for him to come around, double jump, slice, run, wait for him to come around until you drain his health there and then you beat the pattern. And then we go into this next pattern here, which is going to be tricky for players. So you want to speed kill everything if you can. Otherwise, you're going to have to start jumping stuff. And I got hit there. Uh, stand. A little trick here is stand in the middle and just shoot the one in the very back there. If you just stand in the middle and shoot the one in the back, you're in a safe spot. And then you can just manually aim and kill the other people. Uh, these guys here, you want to shoot the left side. And then as the right side rolls, you want to jump over them. And then I forgot about the stupid turns on the left and right. So... This section here is a little bit tricky. The way you have to do it is you have to jump. Oh, no, you can sit in the middle here. But in the first part of the section, you have to jump sort of left and right over those purple ropes. And the reason for it is because those turrets are targeting you. And so if you hold still in the middle, safe spot, they'll shoot you. So you have to sort of dodge the turrets and the ropes at the same time. A little bit of a more advanced uh, dodging section in the game when you first start playing. Uh, you're going to have trouble when you first start playing being able to free aim and jump and then control yourself in the air as you jump because it's like trying to juggle and chew bubble gum at the same time you know there's or whatever the the saying is pat your head and rub your stomach this game does stretch that type of skill that type of motor skill where you need to sort of independently do two things at the same time because your controls aren't as blended together as modern 3d shooters and all that where your movement is on half your movement and half your aiming is on one stick then the other half of them is on the other stick instead the way it works is your movement is all mapped to one stick and then your move or sorry your aiming is all mapped to one stick and then your movement is all mapped to individual buttons so it might take a little bit to get used to this guy here is a tricky mid boss the way it works is you want to blow up his legs 
as quickly as possible. And then he'll go into this phase where he starts spawning these explosion things. And when you first start playing the game, you're, you're inclined to try and slice them, which works defensively. But the problem is you want to speed kill the guy. So don't auto lock onto that previous boss. Instead, you want a free aim. And then when he starts spawning those pieces, you actually want to just jump over them and speed kill the bastard. Just shoot, 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 kill, kill, kill him. Because you want to take him out before he goes into his final pattern, which is an absolute bitch to try and dodge and to deal with. And so it's better just to speed kill him before the final pattern appears. So that's the strategy on that guy. Rather than uh, using your sword to defensively take out his pieces, instead uh, speed kill him and jump over his attacks. So this guy here is gonna be the first main test of your ability to move around in the game. And I practiced that stupid boss fight for hours. So that was a very clean demonstration of it. Uh, in summary, what you wanna do is you wanna lock onto him and then just focus on your movement, focus on your jumping, and focus on jumping in the air and slashing those satellites onto him. And once you get that uh, figured out, you're good to go. So the strategy on this guy, on this pattern here, is very simple, but until you know it, that it can get to be a mess, that first phase. So the way it works is that first phase, you're mostly gonna wanna be shooting the dude, even though it's not damaging him. And the reason why is that uh, has suppressive fire but you want to keep your eye on the little cat or whatever that creature is. And whenever the cat starts moving forward into your range where you can slash it, that's where you kind of jump in front of it, move in front of it and slash it, and then it'll move it back. And then once it's on the back of the screen again, go back to aiming at the main guy and then just wait for the cat to move forward and slash. Uh, that's the main trick there. And then the second phase is just uh, a sword battle where you just spam sword. You sit there and just spam sword and you'll beat that section. So really the boss fight is just that first section here. Next we get into this stage here, the carrier stage. This stage is, mm, it's hard to say whether it's my least favorite stage or not. Uh, the thing about this stage is that it is very intensive on aiming rather than moving around and dodging stuff. It's more about just aiming things and timing your sword slices really well. And so that technique I was talking about before, this is the stage where that first tests that technique a lot. And you can see now, look at my right trigger. You'll see that, especially in the sections with these missiles coming in, you'll see me start doing what I love that option, the sword buffer option where you see I'm shooting and watch as the missile comes, look at my right trigger. Oh, there's no missile, here, here it comes. You see how I'm starting to go do, 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 do like that. I'm starting to go on off on off on off on like this rhythm that's the that's the sword buffering and you're once you figure that technique out the game becomes much more simple so that's uh, a section one section where you definitely want to do a lot of sword buffering is any section that has you reflect things see i missed it there another thing to keep in mind with reflecting these bullets is that they track you they're sort of aimed at you and so if you sort of move to the right as they come in at you at the left, you can gain yourself a little bit of extra time to get that sword buffer in. So that's why I got hit on that one because I was a little standing a little bit too far to the left and there wasn't enough time for my sword to come out. This, again, next section here. Uh, target the helicopters, not only for extra points, but they'll start to give you like health items and stuff like that too as you go on. See, there's a health item. Uh, this section in normal, this stage in normal mode is a big difference uh, as opposed to easy mode. There was a while there where I was playing on easy mode accidentally, so I'm pretty familiar with easy mode. But uh, normal mode, this sec this stage is a lot trickier. Uh, this section here, these guys come up here and they start slashing at you. And this section was a real problem for me until I figured out, it's not scoring wise the best strategy, but survival it's a good strategy where you just hang in the corner there and just let them spawn on the left side and then just sword buffer the ones that spawn on the right. And you can kind of set yourself up a nice little safe camp on the corner there. Uh, this section here is going to be very tricky and until you get your movement down. So the way that works is those bullet, those, uh, those beams move around the screen and you have to sort of micro around them. But really what it comes down to is hurting them onto one side of the screen and then you want to roll across them because when you're rolling you're invulnerable so you can roll across them but if you're too roll spammy you'll roll into them but it'll, they'll hit you on your recovery frames 
So it's a matter of sort of dodging them, hurting them into the corner. And then once you get them into the corner, roll to the other side. This section here I've struggled with forever. As far as those cones, those blow, those cones they drop that explode. You just have to speed kill them. It's just a matter of aiming well and doing it. And then this section here, really, I really struggle with. Probably even in this replay. Uh, I kind of cheese it in the replay. But uh, I was practicing it on the higher difficulty, the expert difficulty or whatever you call it. And the way it works is basically you dodge these two different ways. I'm kind of roll spamming here and I got caught there and some of that is just cheese. But the way you properly dodge that pattern is watch the bullets and watch if they're coming in high or low. If they're coming in high, you want to roll dodge them. If they're coming in low, you want to jump over them. And so it's a little bit tricky because you're sort of moving diagonally on the little platform as they come in. But that's really what you want to watch for. And once I fig figured that out, actually someone in the comment section helped me with that. Once I figured that out, that, that pattern became much, much easier to dodge. So it's all about just watching are they coming in high. If they're coming in high, roll or just you know walk around them. And if they're coming in low, jump over them. So here we go. Also, another strategy, I'm glad I'm showing it here, to uh, reflect things and do a, a, a nice sword buffer is to jump when you're reflecting those bullets. And the reason why is it buys you a little bit of extra time before they hit you, right? Because they have to track you upward as well. So when they're coming in and they're really intensive in certain sections, another strategy to make that buffer window a little larger is to jump as they come in at you, you buy yourself a little bit of time. So blowing up the center there, get them bonuses. Now we get to this section here, which is tricky. So the way this works is you want to auto lock onto, I start with the one on the left, it doesn't matter, but I t try to start with the one on the left. And if you're lucky, you can kind of get him to move off screen a bit. And if you can get him to move off screen, then you only have to dodge one set of bullets that, rather than two. So the way this works is you want to mostly be dodging this uh, horizontally, left and right. But as they get close, double jump and you can kind of get some excel extra acceleration, also some extra dodging. You just have to be careful not to land on top of it because the way this game works to keep in mind is mostly if you can dodge stuff on the ground, it's tip here you want to stand in the middle, by the way, that got me on my first playthroughs and that pattern there, just stand in the middle. Otherwise he'll crush you and do a shitload of damage. But when it comes to dodging things like this pattern here or a lot of the more complicated patterns in the game, if you can, Try to dodge them by walking on the ground rather than jumping over them. And the reason why is because when you're walking, you always have access to your roll and your roll is invulnerable, right? So what, whenever you're in kind of panic situation, whenever you're walking on the ground, not only are you moving quickly when you walk on the ground, but also in case of emergency, you can roll. Problem is if you start dodging most things by jumping over them, you can't roll in the air. So if you get in a bad situation, you just have to eat the hit because you can't roll out of it. And also your air movement isn't as uh, accelerated as your ground movement. And also when you land, there you have some frames of vulnerability where you're landing and you can't do anything. So for the most part, if you want to dodge things, always try to dodge them on the ground. And then there are certain patterns where you just have to jump and jumping is very good, but you just don't want jumping to be your go-to dodging method. Uh, you want it to be your secondary dodging method. So here we go, reflecting these missiles at the little uh, ski guys and the helicopters. This section just really tests, hey, do you know how to sword buffer? Do you know how to sword buffer? And if you do, you'll do fine. If you don't know how to sword buffer, those sections are gonna be a complete nightmare. Again, manually targeting as much as possible. That way you're killing things faster, doing more damage. Jump that, jump that. Yeah, just jump these, not a big deal. Uh, and then another little tip is if you can blow up the uh, batteries, I'll call it the missile batteries. I'll see if I can point one out to you. The missile batteries always give you health upgrade or health items. So if you're low on health and you're getting desperate, always keep an eye out for a missile battery because they will give you a health item. And uh, I'll keep an eye out for if we see any, we might not see any more. This mid boss here, I don't know what the game wants you to do specifically. I guess I could watch some high scoring replays. But if you just sit there and shoot it, unlocked, that you're fine. 
you know it's spawning stuff down there so i don't know if the game is like wanting you to try and kill the ships that it's spawning or score and then you have to sort of deal with the uh survival things but if you're just playing for survival just stand there and shoot it it's fine and then with those guys just speed kill them then here we go boss fight time this boss fight is all about speed killing because the later patterns become very difficult to dodge and they do a shitload of damage so just focus on shooting this guy and getting your missiles jump to the right and then be careful watch the missiles you want to move opposite of the side of the missiles that are spawned. So you want to move, see how they're spawned from the left. You want to move to, the, you want to move and jump to the right. I did a very good boss. That was a very clean boss fight right there. Uh, you want to do that because you want to reflect them. But if you're too close on the left, you don't have enough time for your sword to come out. Uh, these patterns here, don't think about the top one. So you're gonna see bullets spawn on the top. You see there. Don't think about those. Don't jump. Never jump on that pattern. Instead. Just watch for the lower ones and roll through them. Don't try to jump over anything. Instead, like th that's a, a trap. It's a trap of a pattern where if you start to try to jump them, you're gonna get in trouble. See? Don't jump. Just roll. Don't ever jump those. Uh, and then you just blow up the little uh, parts of the ship here. I don't, I'm not a big fan of this second half of this uh, level. It feels a little bit unfocused. This pattern here though is really fun, really difficult, but very fun. So I was practicing this on the higher difficulties. I think this is a pretty decent dodge. Uh, so the way this thing works is once you get out of position, you're just gonna get walloped because you're gonna keep getting hit by the streams of lasers. But what this pattern tests is basically, can you air control and can you shot, can you sword buffer and can you jump? Can you do all three? You know, can you chew bubble gum, uh, pat your head and rub your tummy all at once? That it's like trying to make you do three different things at once. But once you kind of get a feel for how to control your character, it becomes a fun pattern because it's one of the few patterns in the game that test all those uh, controls all at once. Again, these patterns here, you just roll. Don't try and jump those. Okay, these ones you you can jump if you want. Uh, this this is an interesting section because at times it feels like sort of a waste to try and attack both sides. So I've been sort of uh, working on a strategy here where I just attack one side and then just focus on that. And you can see there you sort of let, don't get impatient. Just let them slowly move towards you and then roll. Also, don't stand in between uh, this. You'll see as you go through, it'll spawn different guns. And so you're only fighting two guns at once. But in between the gun spawns, stand in the center because they always spawn shooting on the sides. <laughs> so stand in the center. Uh, that was pretty good, except I forgot and jumped too early. Uh, this bit here, I timed the rolls incorrectly. But if you time it just right, you can uh, just sort of r r roll <laughs> through that last sector there. That, getting that done properly in the higher difficulties, though, is very hard. Uh, okay, important bit of advice here on this section. This section is all about speed killing. Like, literally, because if you don't speed kill it, you die. So the way it works here is do not auto-lock this... A target because if you auto lock you're not going to do enough damage you have to manually aim and so the first section there is just tracking it manually and then the second section here it gets bigger as it does more as it gets more damage well make sure to hit it with the sword slices one two three one two three pause one two three one two three pause when it gets close enough don't worry about shooting it anymore because that does barely any damage so when it gets big and close like that at the last section there just focus one two three sword slice and then it comes back over one two three sword slice Me very much focus on those sword slices because that's really what uh, seals the deal damage wise and then here we go the train level this is probably my least favorite level in the game to be honest i i just think it's kind of weird and lame but now uh, i got i'll give my commentary here so uh the main section here you just want to move from left to right shooting this guy in the face left to right left to right uh, the dogs are going to spawn. Don't really focus in, on them too much. Uh, other than, I guess, if you're trying to kill them for score. But as far as survival, don't worry about them too much. Just dodge their attacks and then uh, move left to right, left to right to, do to dodge that guy's attack. Then we go to the next room here. Slice, slice, sword buffer, sword buffer, sword buffer, sword buffer. Uh, this sec this gate level is all about sword buffering. Uh, this section here... Uh, you want to shoot these things as they spawn, but don't sweat it too much because once they get close, 
You can just sword spam your way through. Just spam s sword slash. Just spam it, and you'll be fine. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what exactly this section is trying to test. I don't know maybe if you're going for score, if you just get more hits, if you manually shoot everything. But at the end of the day, when they start getting close, just sword spam and you'll be t totally fine. So this section here is all about reflecting these guys. They'll bounce into you and you time the sword slices to reflect into him. That's pretty fun. And then once he goes into his second... No, he doesn't have second phase. Instead, we find a different... But somewhere. Sword spam that section there. And then here we go, this guy. So this guy auto-target him and then uh, do this little uh, dance that I do here, which is you sort of... Uh, you move to the left and the right, and but you're single jumping. Rather than double jumping, you're single jumping because you have access to that double jump if you're in kind of a bad position. And there's enough time because of the way the pattern shoots that you can always double jump again. But you see that, so it goes through these waves and then you see that final wave where it shoots this big homing attack. That you want to just move to the left or right side of the screen, whatever you're on, and just roll, fully roll around it. Uh, trying to jump over it, you're going to get nailed. It's too fast, it's homing, it's too good. You have to roll it. Roll around it. Then we go this section here. Just wait for these bastards to get close and sword spam. Uh, don't bother shooting them. Because shooting them does basically nothing when they're on the ground. And it just prolongs the, the stage. So instead, focus. When they're up on the top, you want to shoot them up top to get them to come to the ground. Because otherwise, they'll drop down on top of you. You don't want that. But the ones on the ground, don't bother shooting them. Just wait for them to get close and sword slice them. So just focus on shooting the people at the top. And then once these guys get close, just spam that sword attack. Uh, that one guy got by me. Okay, this guy here is a little bit weird. But the way he works is he's spawning turtles. That's what I like to call them. On the bottom. But don't worry about the turtles. Just jump over the first section. Then there's a section where on the ground you have to slice them. Then jump over them. And as long as you're shooting this guy in the face, he's not going to damage you. But when you're shooting him in the face, he kind of covers his face with his hand. And so sometimes you can kind of get around that a little bit. But for the most part, you have to just patiently keep shooting, moving left, right, left, right, left, right. And he'll be, you'll be fine. The, the main thing about that pattern that matters is not necessarily that the guy is going to do a bunch of damage to you but he can if you don't quite know what to do he can eat into your timer a lot and that's a problem because this stage has some uh, real tight timer concerns when it comes to the final boss and some of these sections here so uh, you just want to make sure you're not getting uh, timed out by the game so this section is all about just suppressive fire catch them as they come up over the chairs Shoot the chairs when they're not doing anything and you'll uh, blow them up so they have less less cover and there's items in the chairs. And then as you walk through, sword slice them for, for items. Okay, this son of a bitch here. Uh, you want to be careful on this guy. I don't know how well I do. And the reason why you want to be careful is because he leads right into the final boss. And if he does a lot of damage on you, uh, that's an issue for the boss. And so the way he works is he ground pounds. And you can kind of cheese it a little bit by double jumping up, just doing this kind of pattern I'm seeing here. You just kind of run, double, as soon as he moves his arm, just jump, and then before it hits the ground, double jump. And you just kind of move left to right, left to right. That was a pretty good pattern. Sometimes it can get a little bit funky and he'll catch you in the air with the slams. But uh, here we go. This boss is probably one that needs the most advice on, so I'm gonna try and deliver the advice as cleanly and quickly as possible. So this guy's the run breaker, the run killer. The way it works is you need to reflect the uh, bullets it's shooting here into its purple eye. And unless you are doing that, you're not gonna be really damaging the boss and you're gonna get timed out. But the thing about it is he also starts to spawn these laser claws you see here. You can shoot the laser claws and kill them. And I recommend trying as much as possible to blow stuff up, even when the purple things aren't uh, being spawned. Not because it really does much damage, but because it doesn't, but because you want to keep the count of the enemy body, the enemy rocks low, so that when it does the laser claws, you can shoot out those laser claws. This is a very clean boss fight, so, uh, I'm not showing you some of the more 
backup strategies. But one thing to keep in mind is there's going to be times and runs where the laser claw is out. And during that time, the way the dodging works is you have to roll through the laser claw. You can't jump over it, and it's so tempting to want to jump it, but you can't. So the way it needs to work is when the laser claw is out, that section of the screen it's occupying. And so you want to kind of move yourself into the corner and try and maneuver around in that corner until the laser claw gets close enough to you, then you roll through it. Um, I never quite demonstrated it because the fight was so good that I killed the laser claws before they really did too much too much uh, damage or anything. But I think I did try to jump it one time out of habit and it clipped me. You have to roll through them. You can't jump over them. So here we go, this section here. This I'm always kind of messy in this section, I'm not going to lie. Uh, just make sure with these guys that come up, don't panic because uh, they don't start damaging you. As soon as they come up, it takes them time to get their mouth out. And so you can just walk around them rather than panicking and rolling and jumping. Just walk around them. This mid boss here is an absolute pain in the ass. Hopefully I do a good uh, example. So when these claws come out, you can see there, they they can damage you. But the thing that damages you the most is the, the bullets that they spawn. These bullets here, you see this, that bullet that spawns? That does a shitload of damage. Why? I don't know, but it does an ass load of damage. And they're very active. So the way you have to deal with it is as soon as those tentacles start spawning, just try and speed kill them. Speed kill them. And then uh, worry about damaging the body when it gets close. Rather than trying to shoot it, just wait till it gets close and then start sword slicing it. And then once you start doing enough damage, you, you see the iguanas or whatever they are will start spawning behind you. Watch out for them. And then there's also a pattern where it, I'm still talking about the mid boss, where the mid boss shoots uh, like ink at you and that does a fair amount of damage. Uh, so just roll around that basically. But don't jump <laughs> because if you try and jump the ink, what often happens is you'll land into one of those dumbass uh, bullets. This guy here is very easy once you know the pattern. So you lock onto him and then you just stand here and jump. That's all you have to do. Don't get cute with it. <laughs> just stand patiently in that corner. If you're really swag, I think you, you can actually just stand in a safe spot and you don't need to jump. But I would just recommend jumping as a backup. It doesn't affect your rate of fire. Don't try to manually target that guy. Uh, practice this section here because you want to roll and catch both the health items. Oh, there we go. I got it. Or walk into the health items. That section is actually incredibly critical even though it looks simple because the scroll kind of moves in a weird way. So I'd recommend making a save state and just learning how to walk into both of the health items because this mid boss here is, or this uh, boss before the boss, or maybe it's just part of the boss fight, I guess. This boss here is one of the more tricky ones and can get out of hand and do a shitload of damage. So the way it works is you wanna just make sure you're doing a lot of suppressive fire on its little spiders that it's spawning there because these guys spawn ass loads of massive bullets that linger on screen forever. So you wanna take them out, but you'll see here that it's shooting these webs, roll the webs, but then make sure you're not getting yourself cornered. So this is a pretty clean demonstration of the boss fight once again. I think this is a pretty good run. This is after I've done like four other 1cc attempts on the switch. And so I had to really learn to optimize a lot of these patterns and stuff like that because the switch input lag is very demanding. Makes the game a lot harder. But here we go. On this guy here, all you need to do is just sword buffer and target him. And what he's going to do is he's going to launch these pieces of meat out at you. And if you're sword buffering, you're going to slash them. So you'll be okay from that. And then targeting him is very easy. He doesn't move around much. So you just sit there, manually target him, sword buffer, and then when he shoots the blue, he shoots these blue electric uh, wall type things, just make sure to very carefully and very calmly move away from them as they spawn. But don't roll, because if you roll, you're going to roll into one. So don't roll in that section. You just calmly step around them slowly and surely, and you can kind of uh, do suppressive fire and buffering and then you're good the final stage of the game this final stage is going to be tricky because it is not an auto scroller for some of the sections so this section here is not auto scrolling instead the way it works is 
your movement to the left. You actually have to move to the left now. Um, I kind of like it. It's kind of a fun little change up. But, uh, so you can kind of cheese it. But remember, Sin and Punishment is not Metal Slug. The timer is actually strict. So you can't spend all day, uh, walking and taking your time. You still have to move at a pretty prompt pace. That way you're not getting timed out. And the way the timeout works is once time runs out, it drains your health and then you die. So, uh, <laughs> you don't want a timeout. So, this section here, just hold to the right for the most part. The, the key part here is nailing these jumps. So, you can see there's these sort of hills that are uh, made, you see there. You want to jump right as you reach the apex of the hill, making sure you're holding to the right and then jump and then double jump over the apex of the hills because there's those things in the middle that spawn and also the time pickups or you want to get those so the way this guy this section works here is you want to sort of i kind of missed commentating that section there but the, the way it worked is you want to run for the most part but at the end you want to run and just jump over those guys hiding behind the trees rather than trying to kill them and worry too much about killing them if you're really on point you can kind of lay your target out before them and kill them as you run but if you can't kill them just jump and then so here we go into this pattern here uh, the sword is your friend don't try and shoot there like I, I tried there uh, just swing and slice the tails with the sword this again it's gonna spawn get up there slice 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 real quick it's all about the sword on this section here. This section here, run. Yeah, that bit there. If you don't run past it, you're going to get in trouble. This bit here, I struggle with to this day. I'm not quite sure what you're supposed to do. Uh, and I fucked this up pretty royally. But uh, yeah, do not do not do this. I'll tell you that much. Do not do this. Find an alternate, <laughs> alternate uh, way to deal with that. This thing here. Uh, I was a little bit off, but you want to just stand in the middle. Don't attack it either, because it makes your hitbox bigger. You just stand in the middle. Um, and then shoot these guys. Run, run, run. Jump. Uh, be quick, because there's guys shooting bombs at you. And also, those things up at the top will actually suck you up into them. And do a lot of damage and catch up, and it's a big mess. So, this section here, I actually died on before... And I ruined a really good run on this upcoming section here. And it's not hard, but if you mess it up, you'll die. So the way it works here is you want to jump, double jump, and then slowly walk. But you see those, whoops, you see those three on the back there? If you miss that jump window and hesitate, uh, you're in for a life of pain. Because the, the you'll get ran over by those three. And it actually killed me in a run that pissed me off big time. So this section here, you need to save state and practice because you have to kill things in a certain order and you have to be very aggressive. Otherwise, they're going to pile up on you and kill you. So the best way I can uh, sort of describe it is don't shoot too far forward. Instead, you want to kind of keep your reticle sort of in the mid screen area and kill things mostly on the left. Uh, don't get too comp uh, caught up on killing things right as they appear on the right because there's too much shit. So instead, just sort of uh, hang out on the left side of the screen and then uh, keep your reticle sort of on the left and middle side. And you're going to just have to save state and practice that bit there because uh, it's all about efficiently killing stuff because if you don't efficiently kill things, they pile up on you. Same thing with this section here. Um, so these centaurs are what you need to want to focus on. You want to kill the centaurs as fast as possible because otherwise they spawn these uh, massive swords that do a ton of damage. That's if they're okay. The way the swords work is you can deal with them three ways. You can slice them and sort of stop them by slicing, but that's the worst way to deal with them because uh, you're not doing damage. You're getting caught up on those. So the way I tend to deal with okay, I'll talk about that in a, sec, in a sec here. We need to talk about this boss here. This boss here, you need to time, jump, and slice. And the, the reason why, just like that, oh, you also kind of want to move as you slice. Uh, jump and slice that guy though don't shoot don't shoot him because shooting him you're not going to do enough damage and if you don't kill him quickly enough he does this sort of kill pattern on you and you're dead so it's all about killing that guy as quickly as possible and the way you do that is just focusing on jumping slicing slicing okay so we're talking about these swords here uh, i did a fairly good job there this last sector here with these 
flying green guys. So the sword strategy I was talking about before is the way it works is if the swords are low, you want to jump them or you want to jump over them. If the swords are high, you just run underneath them. And then sometimes if you get a double sword on screen, you want to roll through the bottom one. That's the way you do with the swords rather than trying to, you know, you can parry them with your with your own sword. But the problem with that is you're not going to be doing damage while you're parrying and so you're going to get in trouble. So last boss, last boss is actually not all that hard once you know how it works. One of the easier bosses in the game, ironically, is the final boss. I guess if you're good at shooting. If you're not good at shooting, you're going to lose. So the way it works is keep calm, first of all. So these little green bullets, you're standing on the earth and you need to protect the earth from the bullets. But it's all about target prioritization and understanding your hitboxes. So you want to as the green ones spawn it's all about just optimizing the way you move your reticle around i'm trying to give you more concrete advice first bit of concrete advice is destroy the rocks first because the rocks do way more damage to the planet than the green things uh this bit here you want to destroy those uh blizzards as soon as possible this bit here i don't think i do it in the replay oh i do it in the replay so this is a very good replay of mine so you want to slice those comments that come down. And there's a pattern here. You slice it to the left, then you, or slice it to the right, you move to the left, slice to the left. And then after you slice the second one, you need to uh, roll to the right and slice the right one. And uh, so that's how you deal with those comments. And then this thing here, you can see the pattern, you just sweep left to right, left to right, keeping it low. And it's important to maintain the sweeping mo movements more than to hit every bullet so if you miss you're doing the sweeping movements and you miss one bullet don't go back and try and get it because uh in the opportunity cost is actually too high and you'll end up missing more bullets in the future so i said you just sweep if you miss one bullet don't sweat it just move up and sweep the next row next row next row that's the way that pattern works and then with all the with all the meteor patterns, the rocks, the kill the rocks, the prioritize the rocks because they do way more damage to the earth. And then there's a pattern where it does this uh, sort of curtain. You, the way you do it is you go up one side of the curtain, you go up the other side of the curtain, and then you sweep the bottom rows of the curtain. But yes, that was my 1cc commentary of Sin and Punishment normal mode. I hope this has been illuminating. This is one of my favorite games of all time. Definitely one of my favorite rail shooters, even though it isn't quite a rail shooter. It should, you know, because you're not fully eight way movement, but uh, you know, close enough. <laughs> There's not enough in the genre to really sweat it. So if you're a big fan of Sin and Punishment, definitely recommend following up by playing Sin and Punishment 2, which is way harder than Sin and Punishment 1, uh, uh, way longer as well. But it has some real highlights and it is a ton of fun, some brilliant level design, some brilliant boss fights, some janky level design and boss fights as well. But overall, uh, definitely play Sin and Punishment 2. And then also check out Wild Guns Reloaded, which is on Switch and Steam and PS4. It's a really cool game and the closest game to Sin and Punishment. It's basically Sin and Punishment. Uh, it has roles. It's just not as good, but it has rolls and it has uh, the same control scheme, basically. Uh, so I'll probably be covering that game on the channel soon as well. So thanks so much. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Anthony Iodice, Aaron Solis, B. Reality, Bo, Ben, Borgie22, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Climby Coyote, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Darren Griffin, Disco Stasleya, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Houseu, JLab, JBRPG, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, KZ, Khalil Reedy, Contain, Larage, Malays, Mark Toms, Matter Oso, Matthew Derigish, Maz, Megadeth859, Minung, Mechelin, Michael Stum, Michelle Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Oakla Googles, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf015, Sarah, Scanline City, Seesaw FW, Seven Overdose, Shmup Junkie, Seri Pong, Steve Fiction, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, Tiram Sugumo, Twilight EX, Unicoi Roots, Wabby Lakes, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.